Willoughby, but the rest of you... The Alan Cox Show. On 100.7 WMMS. I got more money for you. About five, six minutes from now. 4.30, that next keyword from the buzzard bookie is going to be the... Second to last chance today for you to grab some money, and then it starts all over again uh, tomorrow morning with RMG. And Stansbury will have them for you. I'll have them for you, too. But 1000 bucks here is a few minutes away. The Cavaliers win last night in D.C. by eight. Just a handful of points put them over the Washington Wizards. Uh, tonight, they're in Brooklyn. They're going to play the Nets. That's a 7.30 start on MMS. So straight up 7 o'clock is when that pregame coverage will begin. And then they will head up to Toronto to play the Raptors on Saturday night. And immediately following that game will be our Saturday night medal show. It is called Two Hours to Midnight. And it's me, I'm your host, along with Corey Roddick and Pat Butler, and it's two full hours of nothing but metal. There's local stuff, there's your requests, there's brand new music hot off the presses. And so that will be, it probably won't start at 10 because of the Cavs game, but uh, it will start immediately following the Cavs Raptors game. Speaking of Toronto, you know, they just had the NHL All Star game there on Saturday night. And they had a lot of Canadian celebrities and hockey aficionados as captains of these teams. Justin Bieber was a captain, Tate McRae, who's a super foxy singer. I think she did SNL a few weeks back. Uh, Will Arnett, Michael Buble, a lot of proud Canadians were, um, you know, quote-unquote captaining these teams. They were kind of like celebrity advisors uh, for uh, these teams. The video that was going around was of Michael Buble talking about how he was on shrooms and that he was tripping. <laughs> and I think the, in the video where he's talking about it, he's still kind of on shrooms. Well, in the video, he seems drunk. He's sitting there with Will Arnett, um, but he... Let me play you some of this here. I settled down, and then I realized, holy shit, I am at the NHL All-Star Game. And the answer is no. I will not be the oldest draft pick the Vancouver Canucks have ever taken at 48 years old. I know you and you. You're a really good hockey player. You got good hands, dude. You've got silky mitts, my brother. You are the first person who's ever told me that. Because I'm the first real ever hockey fan. We so. literally are the heart and soul of these teams. And I, uh, if they win, it'll be because of us. And if they lose, it will be because of us. All of my, my text, it was people, congratulations, congratulations on... Yeah, so he sounds drunk to me, but he has uh, backed off the shrooms thing, by the way. He said he wasn't on him? He goes, I was just making a joke. It's like, dude, A, I don't know that you're known for being funny. Will Arnett tried to kind of bail him out. That He was sitting right next to him. That there was like a super cut from Instagram, but Will Arnett was uh, sitting right next to him and was like, this might not. Uh, this is going to be weird for you after this. Okay. You know, it just occurs to me that all uh, through all the incredible songs and, that you've done over the years yeah. and all the, the hearts of women that you've won over around the world, with all that talk about fantasy hockey, you lost them all in one sentence. <laughs> it all just evaporated. You, years of building it up and just yeah. and it just gone. Yeah. The mushroom talk lost me all of my contracts. Well, the mushroom too. talk definitely <laughs> lost you a lot of income. Yeah, a lot of income with the mushroom talk. So I don't know if that had anything to do with him backpedaling. Maybe his management team. Again, it's. I think just because mushrooms are illegal in Canada, maybe that's what it was. Because mm. I don't think anybody cares if he was on shrooms. But uh, that was the video that made the round. So Turn off that Christmas album. We don't listen to drug addicts in this house. <laughs> it just put, doesn't seem like Put the that type. with your country Joe and the fish. He what? I said he just doesn't seem like the type, but I guess anybody. I does. don't think he has ever recovered from breaking up with Emily Blunt. I think this guy, because she is the bee's knees. And Michael Buble and Emily Blunt... We're together for quite some time. I think they were engaged. Boop. And she has, 
you know, talked about in interviews that it was this devastating moment in her life. He's since remarried. I'm sure he's married to some hot chick. And, but Emily Blunt, who, of course, would go on to marry John Krasinski, and they've got their own family and everybody seems very happy. But how do you get past that? I don't even know what his wife looks like. But is she going to top Emily Blunt? I don't know. So um, Justin Bieber and Will Arnett are uh, Maple Leafs fans. Uh, Tate McRae is a Calgary Flames fan. Michael Buble follows the Canucks. And he co-owns a junior team. Michael Buble is part owner of the Vancouver Giants. And, um, you know, that was the video that was going around of uh, him uh, theoretically uh, tripping on shrooms. I don't know why Ryan Gosling wasn't there. He's a prominent Canadian. Maybe he was attending, but I don't know. He's too bougie. He doesn't even have an Instagram. Ryan Gosling? Mm-hmm. Does that make you bougie? I feel like you think you're, like, superior because all the, like— Yeah, but you hey, always say people's teams are the ones running them. I, I, I understand. So he didn't even want an Instagram for his team to run. Like, Brad, like I think about the people who don't really— use social media but have them like i think tom cruise has an instagram but he obviously it's not him posting um there's certain actors that have social media and they is for the fans really but, i don't like, even think of it as bougie i think it's smart like brad pitt doesn't have an instagram i don't think smart uh, i don't know it's just there's a certain tier of celebrity once you get so big you're like i don't need it because i'm all, no matter what i touch it's gonna broadcast like it, it, you know i don't need the promotion well, you might be onto something. Got money here for you. It's one thousand dollars. Your second to last chance to grab some of this cash today from the Buzzard Bookie. Good luck. This is your chance to bet with the Buzzard Bookie and win one thousand dollars now. Enter this nationwide keyword at wmms.com. Bank. That's bank. Enter it now at wmms.com. Yeah. So anyway, Michael Bublé took to. Uh, TMZ with a friend of his they were at dinner and they were doing some a video and he's like I was just making a joke I was playing around and maybe he's telling the truth but it seems more likely that maybe um, his team hit him up and go hey bro you know those are illegal in Canada although yeah. I don't understand how they do it in Canada because um, psilocybin is still technically illegal but then there's people who have dispensaries open so I'm not Quite sure how that works up there. I do want to mention, too, today being February the 8th, it is the second anniversary of our friend Rick passing away. Our buddy Frederick Clayton, who used to call the show all the time, and uh, I told the story at the time of uh, trying to figure out what had happened to him, and I went to a funeral of somebody who was not him. You did not know. A funeral of a complete stranger. But again, maybe that makes it a little bit more impactful. You know, maybe those people appreciated that I was there to pay my respects to somebody who I had no clue who they were. And once I explained the situation, uh, they were still very kind. But uh, we didn't know what Rick's name was. So, and we hadn't heard from him for quite some time. He called pretty frequently and we hadn't heard from him. And so we started digging around and we, we never actually did con hear from the person who got us the confirmation, which was like the brother of a sister or something. Yeah. We had gotten an email or a text or something from somebody who knew that person, and um, I tried to contact that person, and they never got back to me. But at least it was able to point us in the right direction, and we could confirm that Rick had passed away. And so that was two years ago today. You say either, I say, say yo. You say neither, and I say, you know, either, you know, and either, tell me about it. Let's call the whole thing off. Yes, you like potato, and I like, wow. You like tomato, and I like, what's wrong with the Cavalier? Potato, you can get it, right? Tomato, why? Let's call the whole thing off. What did he? What was his boxing name? Was it Devastation? Yeah, he was a boxer. Devastation. Right? Yeah, back in the day, yep. boxed under the name Devastation. 
So our buddy Frederick Clayton, dead uh, two years today. Alan, did you see that the Browns bought up a huge parcel of land? I, I saw the. Ha- I heard Sansbury talking about it. This is the old Ford plant. Is that what it is? The old Ford plant out on uh, Brook Park Road. The Haslam family bought up a massive, massive plot of land. And if I'm correct on on where that is, it's 176 acres in Brook Park. And so it the spec be the speculation becomes. Uh, that they're, um, the possibility of the Browns building a stadium in the suburbs, I guess, no is way. the... way. Now, why is that? Because that's what that seems to be the consensus. That's what I hear people saying, and I don't understand why they're so convinced that that wouldn't happen. I, mean, I don't understand that. What are they going to do with the market on the lake? I don't know. Give it like to the... Like, all the teams have always been downtown. Not always. Well, weren't they out in Richfield? The Cavs were, yeah. Out, in the, out the Coliseum? It was mm-hmm. way before my time here, but I mean, right. I know a little bit of the history. But yeah, they, they the Cavs started in the Col- at the Coliseum, and this I think this is just their way of trying to get Cleveland to pony up more this money. This is a negotiation yeah, tactic. That's for what, what I think. though? To get a new stadium. A new stadium on the, the lakefront. And they get Cleveland to pay oh, for it. Oh, so they say, we'll move it if you don't pay for this new stadium. Yeah, the mm-hmm. Bears just went through this. Chicago Bears were like, we're going to build a stadium out in the suburbs. And so they started looking at, you know, talking to the city of Arlington Heights and looking at land and all this stuff. I mean, think about And the- then the city comes around and goes, well, we really want to have, well, we want, I mean, they, Soldier Field went through renovations not that long ago, and now they're trying to get the city to pony up for a new domed stadium. Now, Soldier Field should have a dome on it. If they were going to build a new stadium here in Cleveland, it should have a dome on it. But that's what it felt like to me was, okay, this is what you do when you're trying to get it's more billionaire hissy fit stuff, right? And they'll probably end hey, up. Hey, how can I get the? How can I get Joe and John Q. Public to foot the bill for my new stadium? And they'll they'll spend that much money to buy a lot that they don't even plan on using just to do it because they that's how much they'll save by having the city pay for more stuff. Of course, hundred seventy six acre parcel nine miles southwest of downtown Cleveland. About 1,000 feet from Hopkins International Airport. So, um, I mean, who knows? Now, I don't know what you do if you you buy that land and then don't do anything with it. I don't know how the, I guess you just sell it to someone else or I don't know. Sell to someone else or they turn that into the new headquarters and move out of Berea. uh, I mean, or they can develop it for something else, turn it into the giant Pilot Flying J, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> is, is that what he is? Yeah, yeah, I think so, yeah. The Browns lease at Brown Stadium expires after the 2028 season. So, yeah, I don't know. It, it's, it just feels like one of those things where they're, they're playing chicken with the, – I, I, again, I don't know how many goddamn uh, stadiums they can reasonably expect people to help pay for. They're like, well, the job credit, blah, jobs and blah, revenue. Right. I mean, my life has not improved since I started to help pay for the Romo Fijo. So just think about how awful traffic will be flying in. Like you're you're coming home. Yeah, you or, come down one seventy six, get off on Brook Park Road, you're right there. But if there's the day of a game, Oh, my God. It would be awful. Yeah, but it's terrible now on game day. What's the difference? But people don't not, live where the stadium is. There's a hell of that, a lot more people live downtown than used to. But not more than live in I'm the saying, suburbs. Yeah. Getting in and getting out would just be awful. Like, the it, the airport would be congested. Uh, the, the field would be congested. Everything would be congested. Yeah. And, like, just logistically, I don't know how that would work. Like, what if you fly, like, a blimp and stuff? Like, by- Well, the airport's right there. Uh, yeah, so if a plane is taken off, oh. like, you know what I mean? Yeah. You got to be away from that. Like, it's like, all right, 10-4. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know pilots speak, but you're like, oh, crap, it's coming right for us. They're it's dodging blimp birds. Friendly. Take a blimp ride. <laughs> dodging you know? birds and blimps yeah. in the hunt. Yeah, you're right there. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a game today, so we have to uh, take evasive maneuvers. Mm-hmm. Get your punk ass out the sky. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. People flagging you down. What do you think you're doing? Right. Come back down here. 
They want a deal for a $1 billion renovation of Brown Stadium. We got to make room for this spirit uh, aircraft. Get out of here. Right. Well. Bob Blimp. City of Cleveland source says that it's unlikely that the Haslam's would secure a purchase agreement merely to motivate Cleveland officials to the, oh, you mm-hmm. poor, poor mm-hmm. suckers. Yeah. Why would they do that as they're bending over and greasing up? Well, who knows? But, yeah, the Bears not long ago were like, hey, I think we're going to move to the suburbs, and then it became – What I think is funny is the argument that people put up about, like, well, it should be in the city if it's the Cleveland, bro. Like, who cares? If it's not in the city limits, who cares? They don't call them the Foxborough Patriots. (laughs) Right. Now, I think they should absolutely become the Brook Park Browns if that's where they go. go. Mm. Some pride to that city. The alliteration. I mean, Cleveland Browns. Come on. The Brook Park Browns. So we'll see. But boy, that's that land purchase certainly has local tongues wagging <laughs> over what this all means. What could it mean? All this lakefront development. Why would you vacate the lakefront now? They're going to build a land bridge. That's better than any other kind of bridge. That's better than a water bridge. That's better than an air bridge. Sky bridge. It's better than a sky bridge. It's better than a dirt bridge. Dirt bridge. Kind of the same thing. I... Land bridge is dirt. What? Hey, Pardon me? I'm land sorry? Land bridge has got some dirt on it. Oh. Uh, I got a break. 35192, send me a text. Alan Cox.